Hello, I'm going to make another short YouTube video today, uh, going further into Stephen Meyer's Darwin's Doubt. I apologize in advance for the light. It's very, I got reflections everywhere. I can't seem to find anywhere to record this uh, where there's not sun coming through. We're having a rare fall sunny day here in Alaska. Um, anyway, um, so I want to talk about Stephen Meyer's, this is probably his favorite quote, I would guess, because he not only uses it in Darwin's Doubt, he uses it in Signature in the Cell. Uh, he uses it, um, if you watch any of his videos here on YouTube, you'll see that he almost always, or at least a large percentage of the time, starts off with this quote, or introduces this quote at the beginning of his talk. Um, it obviously means a lot to him, and at first glance, when you hear it, it sounds, you know, you can say, oh, I see why you would use that quote. It sounds very convincing. Um, Henry Quassler, uh, the, the author of the quote, it was a famous um, information theorist who specifically worked with the origin of life um, and information in biological systems. Um, so he's a pretty pretty big guy, not associated with, he's, he's passed away a long time ago. He's not associated with the Discovery Institute, so he's a, therefore a really good non-intelligent non, uh, design proponent, you know, who you can, they can point at and say, see, this guy even supports us or supports our stance on it or wouldn't have supported our stance on it. I'm going to start off though by just reading the quote. So he says right here, this is on in the prologue um, of, of Darwin's Doubt. As information theorist Henry Quassler observed, the creation of information is habitually associated with conscious activity. That's the end quote. Uh, Meyer goes on, whenever we find functional information, whether embedded in a radio signal, carved in a stone monument, etched on a magnetic disk, or produced by an origin of life scientist attempting to engineer a self-replicating molecule, and we trace that information back to its ultimate source, invariably we come to a mind, not merely a material process. So that's his, that's his interpretation of what Quassler said. Um, because I, you know, for some strange reason, uh, don't believe anything that well, anybody from the Discovery Institute says, especially when they quote a legitimate scientist, I always, my first thought is, I bet you that either doesn't mean what they think it means, or it's out of context or something else, because, well, frankly, every single time I look at a quote, that's exactly the case. Um, so I went and uh, purchased Quassler's, the, I probably can't read that either because of the stupid reflection. Um, it's on the the emergence of biological organization, which is where that quote came from. And Quassler writes, since creation of information is habitually associated with conscious activity, it will be worthwhile to discuss this mode of creating information in terms of human activity. Um, now, in context, that sounds like that's pretty much what Stephen Meyer said, right? Except for the fact that he's discussing this how nucleic acids can originate through just natural processes, and he's using a specifically using a combination lock as a, a analogy as an analogy to how information is can be randomly selected and still have meaning if it becomes that's that's putting it really stupid. I'm sorry, that was a terrible way to word that. I apologize. He he states right here. This instance of, emerge, of information emerging by the choosing of a number combination to unlock a safe. It does not matter how the combination was originally selected, wisely by culling from a table of random numbers, or unwisely by using a guessable sequence such as the birth date or telephone number. What matters is that before the combination is set into the lock, every number sequence is exactly as good as every other one, namely no good, and after it has been set, one sequence is useful and all the others are useless. Thus, the choice of a sequence and the subsequent implementation of that choice by setting the lock have created information. And then he goes on, well, for the rest of the book, talking about how this accidental choice remembered uh, can account for complexity, uh, specified complexity as the, as the um, discovery people would say, um, can originate naturalistically. So when he stated that uh, creation of information is habitually associated with a conscious activity, he's saying since most of us are familiar with how intelligent beings such as ourselves create information, I'm going to use that as an analogy to talk about how it could occur in nature without an intelligent source. So again, um, extremely deceptive of the uh, Stephen Meyer and Casey Luskin, who's also used that quote, uh, to use this implying that somehow Quassler, it supports them, or he's like Quassler is emphatically stating 
all information comes from an intelligent mind or from an intelligent source. That's not what he's saying at all there. He's saying, let's just use this example uh, from human activity, uh, if that makes sense. And m furthermore, he, he let, one of the, there's a couple of videos. I was going to find a clip, but it was, a, I didn't bother. Um, he tells the story of how he was a, you know, in graduate school and um, bought the, you know, the whole naturalistic explanation, you know, because that's what he was taught. But something about it bothered him. Something didn't sit right with him. And then one day he was reading Quassler's information theory um, on the emergence of biological organization. And he saw that this great scientist, this, the father of, of information theory as it applies to biology, saying exactly what was always bothering him. And then it, he put it into words. And that's what really what convinced him. So he just he uses it not only as a dishonest quote, but he uses it contextually to imply that um, that somehow Stephen Meyer is following in the footsteps of this other great information theorist, which again is not true. Uh, big, why, why would Henry Quassler write a book about how information can originate naturalistically or materialistically um, if he didn't believe it, if he didn't think it was possible? Kind of, you know, context. So anyway, uh, that's it. It's going to be a very short video. Uh, I will try to make more in the future. Take care.